YouTubers. Been working on the body on the Blackfoot. And I know in the unboxing video, I promised that I was going to make this thing exactly like it was on the box. And I had that set in my mind. You got to understand that. I had it set in my mind. But my natural nature of building things, I have to change things a little bit. And I kept going back and forth for about two weeks trying to decide. And then I was going to, like, do multicolors. And then I kept pulling myself back. No, 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 no. Don't get too far. Keep it, keep it basic. But I had to modify the rig a little bit. I had to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this instruction manual out of the way. And you are going to see where I'm at to this point. And I am not done with the body. I still have to do a lot of detail work as far as I'm putting the windshield in, mounting the grill, mounting the tailgate. I didn't mount it. I just kind of pressed it in there. The light bar. I have to put all that together. But I'm very happy with the result. And I've been working on it pretty much all afternoon. It's Saturday afternoon. So here we go. There is my rendition of the 2016 re-release trying to keep vintage as possible but putting my little spin on things as you can see I kept the Blackfoot 3 grill I started out painting it flat black and then I went back and detailed all the silver out and painted the headlights and painted the marker lights and I am very happy with the result I think it looks great um, I left the bumper chrome, which I'm not a big fan of the chrome. Normally I always paint over it, but I, I kept the chrome. Now we're going to go to the front of the hood here. Normally the Ford emblem is there. There's a Blackfoot sticker in the kit that's about this long. And what I did was I individually cut every letter out and spread it evenly across the front of the hood, Blackfoot. And I'm happy with that too. I'm curious to see what you guys think. I'm really happy with that. The standard hood here has the red, big red inset decal, and then it says stomping around with a G and an A. I got rid of the red back. I didn't want that whole decal on there. And I took out the G and I took out the A, so it just says stomping around. So I changed that. Now I'm going to give you a view of the sow. If you notice now, this thing comes dyed in black, but I never leave a vehicle the way that comes from the factory because it's all uneven and you know you get shiny spots and dull spots and I myself always paint everything. But what I did was I started off with flat black on the whole body. And I put a couple coats of flat black, washed it, put a couple coats of flat black. And then I modified most of the stickers. These are standard, that's pretty much the way they go. Uh, what I did was the Blackfoot on the side, is there's a big red panel, I got rid of all that. I cut out the Blackfoot decal. I cut out the Jake's Motorsport, got rid of all the red that went around here. I, I just don't like them big bulky. Uh, that's the one thing Tamaya does, they got these humongous stickers and they cover up with color in that. If I'm gonna do color, I'd rather do paint. So that's just not my thing. So you can see the decals down the side. You can see how I did the back. Got the taillights detailed and everything. Blackfoot sticker in the middle. I found an old Ford Motocraft. It was a big sticker. And I cut out the Motocraft automotive parts and put that on there. Detailed the door handles and locks. Got the driver rambling Ron. And I don't know if you guys have figured out, hopefully the lighting, tells the story here but I don't know if you guys figured out what I did here but I did a couple steps flat black first then I put the decals on then I weathered the decals if you notice they're not shiny and they look like they're actually recessed in the body they're not shiny anymore I weathered the decals and I stumbled across this technique with my Unimog I used a PS31 window tint, Tamiya window tint, and I dust it on the decals and over the body to the till I get the desired result. Then what happens is there's a variation in the color. It's not flat anymore. Where I where I hit the decals is a little shinier. So then I went back and I took lacquer, dull clear, dull coat clear, and cleared the whole truck with dull coat. 
and it gives it a weathered, not, not so much a weathered finish, but a dirty, in-use finish. You don't have that boom, brilliant, shiny sticker, and then the rest of the truck is dull, and it just does not look real. So I went back and did that on the whole truck. So all the stickers now are dull. They look like they're actually in the paint. It doesn't look like a decal that's put over, and they actually are in the paint because they're painted over. So that's the steps that I took with this body. Then the other step I did was I took the wheels. You can see the back of the wheel is normally like this. I dull cleared the wheels, and then I went over those with PS31, just dusted them to give it a dirty, dirty kind of, you know, again, weathered look, dirty look, whatever you want to call it, like a truck that's actually in use. Then when the paint was wet, I rubbed a couple spots, like, you know, like if the guy hit it with something, you know, and the dirt was coming off. So I did that on all the wheels to, to dull it up a little bit. They're still yellow, but that's where we're at. So here is my rendition of the Blackfoot. It is still the Blackfoot. It's kept most of the decals intact. It's true to how it came, but I did veer from the path a little bit by doing these stickers. I think it turned out really good. I'm really happy with it, and I can't wait to get this thing together. Now with the radio and the servos here, I can continue to build the body, put the body together, and build the kit itself and get this baby up. But I think it's going to look really sweet. Richie saw it. He said he loves the matte black all the way around, and just too much red in my opinion. I love the way the truck looks on the box art, don't get me wrong, but... It's just the way it is when I get into stuff. So I apologize for telling you guys on the podcast and the unboxing that I was not going to veer from the path and I was going to keep it exactly the same. But it's just not the case. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this. This is going to be a two-part start of the build series. You're going to watch the unboxing of the Futaba radio that I bought next. And uh, thanks, for, thanks for watching, guys. What's up, YouTubers? Rich from 2RC Productions here coming at you. And it's been a couple weeks since I had a video. The last video was the 2016 Blackfoot Tamaya unboxing. And I want to thank everybody for checking that video out. You know, whenever you put a video out like that, that uh, happened to be a hot item that just was released, and one of my video was one of the first ones up on that, uh, we got a lot of views in just a couple weeks. We got like 2,600 views on that video already. So, and uh, there's some new subscribers uh, been coming on board we're at about 1660 subscribers right now which is uh, awesome i want to thank all our supporters thank everybody for subscribing and thumbs up on the video so let's get to the uh task at hand here this week's video is the futaba attack 2dr radio now to clarify this is going to be for the blackfoot and i was going back and forth trying to decide what kind of radio I wanted to get if I was going to get a pistol grip I've been wanting that uh, Fly Sky GT 3B controller I think that thing's pretty cool I like the iconic ET4 a lot I mean that radio is phenomenal it's probably my favorite radio and I wanted to bring back a little bit of the feel for those of you that have seen the Blackfoot video you know what that Blackfoot means to me uh, huge, huge thing in my childhood that I wasn't able to get the kit and I wanted to try to bring that feel back that that retro uh, feel to this build and I'm into the build now I started working on the body uh, the radio I needed the radio and the servos to continue on the kit itself and this radio is going to give it a vintage feel, and I'm going to show you why real quick. Hold on one second here. When I was a kid, I had the Futaba FPT2NL. It was a solid black radio, stick controller. I also had this, the Futaba Attack R, which I still have, which still works. It pilots my Hornet, and it pilots my associated TC3 awesome radio 30 years old still working now this radio is an is an FM radio I believe it's uh, 75 megahertz this one and it's old school it's got the big whip antenna I'm looking for my little knife here as I'm speaking with you here so I can un 
unbox this baby for you. But this is a old school, here it is. This is an old school deal right here. Stick controller, big whip antenna so you can smack your buddy with it. Old school, like when I was growing up. You know, the new stuff now, the 2.4 gigahertz is, is great. I love the radios. But I had to, let's see if I can get this edge here, man. I got the, it was kind of strange. It came from Amazon and there we go. And they didn't box it up. It's just taped up and it's in this form. It didn't come in another box, which is kind of weird. Came out of Kentucky. Amazon with tax and shipping was like $56. So let me get this thing out of the box here. So, okay. Throw the box on the side there. The Attack 2DR instruction manual for cars and boats, two digital, two channel digital proportional RC system. So you see the book there. Which, to be honest, when I started looking through the radios, I saw this a while back, and I was amazed. Just gives you all your instructions and stuff. I was amazed that they still make this radio. And they still call it the Attack after all these years. So, like I say, even looking at this, opening this up, I'm amazed that they still carry this, man. It's crazy. Look at 77. That's the frequency. Crystals. You don't have that no more with the 2.4. They got the little flag that goes on the, contr the controller. And I'm, I'm like, it's, it's just amazing to me that they still have this. I think there must be a market. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. I've been suffering with a, with a major cold this week, and I'm starting to get a little bit better, but I was hoping I could get through this without gagging and stuff. So uh, please cut me a little slack on that. But here's the receiver. Old school Futaba receiver, 75 megahertz. Got the big crystal in there. See, that says 82. That's weird. Oh, no, okay, 75. No, 77. I don't know what that is. Yeah, so the frequency is 82. There's the crystal in there. And a little receiver, and then it comes with, again, old school. It comes with two S3003 Futaba servos, which I use these for my other stuff all the time. They're good servos. I've never had a Futaba servo burn out ever, ever, since I've been in the RC. Never. So anyway, it comes with two. One for the steering, and one for the mechanical speed controller, which nobody uses anymore. So again, I, I think that's cool because if I go buy a radio, I'd have to buy the radio and then I would have to buy my servo, which is an additional $12, $15, $20, whatever you want to buy. I mean, you could spend a ton on servos, but every, this servo goes for about $12 to $14. So I have my steering servo because I am going to use an electronic speed controller on the Blackfoot. If you have a manual speed controller, like the old school, you have to have a servo to push that speed controller back and forth. And I will show you on my Hornet real quick, so you can get an idea what I'm talking about. I like to be descriptive in my videos. So here's my old Hornet. Here is the servo in there. Here is the mechanical three-step forward, three-step reverse speed controller. When you hit the trigger, you're moving that physically. It's making the electrical contact. Now they're not like that. They're all electronic. So they are still keeping this radio like like it back in 1980s it's it's crazy and then look at it, it comes with the battery compartment now the battery compartment is to power the servos um, the ESCs now run off of your battery pack so if you have whatever you have a 7.2 volt nickel metal hydride battery it's a battery battery eliminator circuit it runs off of your battery in the old days like in my Hornet I used to run it off this, so I'd put four double A's in here, and this would power the servos. The car just ran off the battery as far as the motor. So I am not going to use this in a Blackfoot, but fortunately, I am going to use it in my Hornet because my Hornet battery compartment is destroyed. It completely fell apart, and I had to throw it out. And my plan this year is to do a restoration on my Hornet. So I can use this in my Hornet. So now I bought this radio for $56. I got the servo I need. I got a receiver. I have an extra servo for the next vehicle I build. I don't have to buy another one. And I have the battery compartment for my Hornet. So this was just a win-win all around. And it is gonna give me the vintage feel that I want. 
I mean, this radio feels really nice in the hand. Typical old school. You know, compare you compare the differences. I mean, there's absolutely no comparison in the quality back in the 80s. I mean, this thing's built like a tank. It's just real precision. It has the battery dial with the meter that goes up and down. A little dial. I mean, with the. I mean, it's it's awesome. It's an awesome radio. Obviously, these are obviously built much cheaper. You know, this was probably built in Japan back in the day. This is a China China version, but it's it still says attack on it, which keeps the vintage look for me. It's got the big old sword antenna on it, old school. It's got the servo I need, which I would have bought this servo anyway. And I can kind of keep it looking vintage with my little crystal there and my Futaba Attack stick controller. So there it is. I'll let you guys know how this works. And this is going to be the first installment of this video. And this video will either be just this video or I started working on the paint on the Blackfoot. And I might throw a little clip of that in there. But I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, please don't forget to rate, subscribe, and comment in no particular order. Give the video a thumbs up. Like I say, 1,660 subscribers is absolutely phenomenal. I never in a million years thought we'd get to that point. I like to, at each video, state where we are as far as subscribers because then it gives me something to look back on and see you know, how we've been growing. And I'm just enjoying the heck out of the hobby. Give a shout out to all my boys over at Team Integrity RC fantastic bunch of guys we're up to like 90 90 solid members there of just die hard awesome awesome rc people women and men there we have both so that's it futaba attack 2dr comes with two servos receiver battery battery compartment if you want to run you know your four double a's in there and ordered it from amazon two days ago showed up at my door two days later uh, looks like it's in good condition, and that's it. Thanks for watching.